स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया गुड मॉर्निंग वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ एडिटिंग एंड टू की कॉन्सेप्ट आर मॉन्टाज एंड जम कट वी हैव ऑलरेडी बीन सींग दैट वॉट लीनियर एडिटिंग इज ऑल अबाउट लीनियर एडिटिंग मीन्स दैट द नैरेटिव इज फ्लॉलेस इट डज नॉट कॉल एनी अटेंशन टू इट सेल्फ बट वेन वी रिजॉर्ट टू टेक्निक्स लाइक एडिटिंग एंड जम कट uh both very european terms okay we are uh, in other words uh sending a signal that uh, there there has been a passage of time or something else something radical but definitely it's not a linear story telling as com uh, co contrasted with or as compared with the earlier mode of narrative so therefore montage and jump cut i am going to ask you to give me certain examples from your own experience of montage and jump cut which are used nowadays indiscriminately but there was a time when they these concepts were newly introduced and there was an ideology so there has to be a reason for this and not just because a filmmaker wants to be very smart and very cool so he resorts so now that's what we uh, we find nowadays happening especially in mtv kind of cross cutting scenes but that was not the case when montage or jump cut began they had some firm roots in ideologies okay so montage is a kind of an editing technique and we are shown um if you look watch a particular scene from citizen kane citizen kane is, uh, is supposedly one of the uh, most innovative films ever made and the scene where Charles Foster Kane and his first wife they sit across a dining table and have a conversation about uh, how much time he spends on the newspaper and his ideological concerns what he should be publishing i mean we are told she is the president's niece so she doesn't want him to publish anything which goes against the principles of the president so the marital discord uh, symbolically represented on screen okay through distancing or through portraying the distance between them on the dining table and also showing a passage of time as they argue and drift apart so it's a series of images and sound that form a kind of a visual pattern okay there may not be any clear logical or sequential pattern but what you are supposed to understand is there is a gap there is a passage of time and a uh, people are uh, you know um going through certain kinds of changes now um montage is a soviet term or uh, a technique and it was first used in the 1920s and this is a name that you should know lev kuleshov lev kuleshov who first gave us the idea of montage uh so um apart from lev lev kuleshov his other partner and more uh, definitely better known partner sergey eisenstein battleship potemkin good battleship potemkin okay so one of the greatest filmmakers ever and one of the most renowned film ever it's a silent movie battleship potemkin it's available freely so you should watch it these two men are uh, uh, responsible for developing montage as a technique now uh, kuleshov's significant contribution was the idea that each shot is like a building block and it derives its meaning from its context that is the shot play or the shots placed around it so uh, they used to conduct several editing and filmmaking workshops and 
uh, the school was called V G I K. I will give you the um, full form of this abbreviation later. So, Kuleshev and his students would systematically dissect David Griffith's Intolerance 1916 movie, uh, viewing it several times, editing, re-editing, sometimes assembling and reassembling it. So, what they were trying to learn at that film school and this is a technique that several film schools follow even in our country now, they take a, a very uh, particularly well known film and then they start cutting and reassembling it and reordering it. What are they trying to do? How we view a film based on the directors? You know completely ideology can change, the concept of the movie can change if you start reordering it. You look at Pulp Fiction, I think that is a movie which is very commonly accessible to most of you of your generation. If you watch the a movie like Pulp Fiction, you know how they play around with ordering of the movie. But if you show the entire movie in the linear order without playing around with the order, then it becomes something else. How does the movie end? John Travolta is still alive, okay. but what happens to him? He dies, he is shot dead by someone in the middle of the movie, okay. but here he at the uh, when the movie ends we uh, see him just uh, walking off with his partner okay so well, how uh, playing around with the editing can change the meaning or concert, uh, context of the film we'll do we'll be doing pulp fiction soon so then in uh, that particular section session we will be dealing with it in depth so kuleshev further felt that juxtaposition placing side by side dissimilar elements should be inherit, inherent in all film signs. You already know what are signs and symbols and codes in cinema. So, according to Kuleshev and during his lectures at VG IK, shots acquire new meanings when juxtaposed with what comes before and after. Let us assume close up of an old lady and then close up of a very rich man and then again close up of a hungry child. Okay. There is a story now being told. These close ups may have been taken from different places and different points of time, okay. but when you put them together seemingly different elements, right? juxtapose them and then what happens? You are telling a story there is an old suffering lady, there is poverty perhaps or maybe she is a very rich lady who is totally indifferent, insensitive to the sufferings of others and then you have a very rich man and then you have a hungry child, seemingly no connection, bring them together there is a story. So, that is what Kuleshev tells us that how montage can lend a particular ideological meaning to the proceedings. Ask me any question if I am confusing you or confounding you. Okay. So, this was known as the Kuleshev effect. What he did, he, to, uh, he uh, focused on an actor Ivan Mozikin and spliced, you know he took his close up shot, the actor's close up shot spliced in shots of a woman lying in a coffin, a little girl with a teddy bear and a bowl of soup. Same actor, same face okay, and then a sequence of these shots. What shots? Girl with a teddy bear, a woman in a coffin and a bowl of soup. And everyone said what a great actor Ivan Mozikin is. He was not acting at all, it was the same face, same expression. However, people read meanings into those shots because of the way editing was done. Okay, so, editing is because he, uh, the close up shot of a woman in coffin and the actor's face, Ivan's face. Then a child with a teddy bear, perhaps a hungry child and the actors, perhaps the 
father you know you have all, we have all watched a movie like uh, children of paradise yeah that irani movie children sorry children of heaven yeah so we know uh, what a helpless situation the parents are in yeah and then a bowl of soup and again a close up shot of the actor he was not reacting to any anything okay it was just the same close up shot which kuloshov has taken once and juxtaposed it with all these yeah so he he what he was trying to do was to communicate a certain uh, idea a thought that how editing can change the meaning of the narrative but see those were all soviet communist ideological principles nowadays you find montage happening any which way all right um so um, collectively it was called creative geography that is splicing together bits of action from various films and taken from different spaces countries and regions so several shots put together from different films today we will call something like this collage and we talk about and um, and the war all and all those things okay there was a time when all these things were deeply rooted in a certain kind of ideology uh jigavartov another extremely important name and his movie silent movie man with a movie camera 1929 a russian film a silent film and it combines radical politics with cinematic aesthetics and it was all in the family kind of an affair where uh, his brother was involved and his sis, uh, wife was involved in editing and producing and directing the film jigavartov is the man with the movie camera he goes out on the street uh, and captures the city mostly moscow and the hustle and bustle of the city city in in uh, its all uh, uh, in all its glory and its drawbacks and its failures so we look at the transport the buses the trams the citizens the industries it is also one of the most important uh, uh, innovations by way of narrative because it demonstrated a non linear narrative form for cinema so it's not like that cause and effect remember narrative or linear form is always the cause effect kind of cinema where the, something is happening and as a result of that something else is happening remember aristotle remember poet, poetics everything should have a beginning middle and end but jiga wart of uh, subverted that kind of a mindset it need not everything need not have a mind be, beginning middle and end and therefore when the movie ends you never realize why it ended the way it ends because it doesn't have that kind of a linear structure and uh, it uh, it had it claimed the movie claimed to be highly realistic and capture the day to day happenings of like the birth of a baby the death of someone get people getting married at the registrar's office instead of a church so that is also what are we trying to tell the audience when people start getting married in registrar's office and not in churches is there a social change happening yes so also yes yeah, so again as i was telling you the ideological beliefs of these filmmakers so why were they interested in these kinds of situations to tell the people that yes there is a social change happening around us be alert to that okay and also divorce it's an emblematic shot a uh, close up of a magnified eye looking through the camera lens that is jigavart of eye okay the man with the movie camera and the man with a movie camera and you can see the magnified eye through the camera lens okay so um 
this is also the time when people started getting interested in cities. So, perhaps you are aware of a genre, not exactly genre, but a category of films called uh, the city symphonies. Okay, Peri Jatem is a city symphony. New York, um, New York, I love you. Okay, it's a city symphony. Tokyo Stories is a city symphony. Okay, so Man with a Movie Camera was one of the earliest known films that pay a homage to the city. City in its reality, city the way it exists, not the glorified, glamorous, artificial city of uh, the Hollywood sets. This is the actual city as seen um, in its day to day life. And uh, he experimented a lot as we have been talking by way of editing including slow motion. Now, you today you know how slow motions and when slow motions are used. Okay, so, let us not get into that, but uh, Giga Waterf was one of the first people, person, filmmaker to use slow motion. Also, occasionally animation, zoom. What is zoom? What is a zoom? Can you, can you enact zoom for me? You know what is a zoom? No? Yeah, yeah. You know. Okay, fine. So, you know zoom. We will talk about the split screen. What is the split screen? Yeah, can you give me some example? Okay. Um, if you watch ocean series, it is used very often, split screen, especially the highest scenes. Yeah. As this is happening and at the same time several other things are happening and it is all split. So, sometimes you have at least 7 to 8 splits at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Um, focus, uh, blurring focus and freeze. You remember what is freeze? Image is frozen on screen. Okay. Freeze has a, for some reason come to be associated with through four hundred blows. Take this name down. Watch this movie. Extremely, extremely entertaining, and one of the first movies of the so-called French New Wave. France, Francois Truffaut, four hundred blows. Please watch it. <coughs> and how he uses the freeze at the end of the film. And Giga Wartoff is credited with using montage effectively, especially at a in a scene where hand work is transformed into mechanized labor. So, as we were talking about montage has its roots in ideology, a certain kind of an ideology. Okay. So, as a socialist text, the man with a movie camera pioneers an age where workers would be able to afford. This is the ideology of the film. Leisure activities, play football, soccer, go to cinema theatres, do sports, swim, basically have enough leisure and have enough means to indulge in, in these uh, activities. Okay, Sergi Eisenstein, another important filmmaker, we have been talking about him, Battleship Potemkin, Eisenstein's dates 1898 to 1948, Russian director of uh, Strike, Battleship Potemkin and October. October is all about what? October Revolution, there was a revolution in October, which year? 1917. Okay. So, the movie is all about the October, the famous October revolution of 1917. And uh, Einstein articulated the theory of montage and typage using non-professional actors with clear physical traits in representative roles. I do not know, uh, I think recently I did 
a, a session on characters remember okay and we were talking about flat and round characters so flat characters are often representative characters we were talking about how mr bean represents a certain section of uh, the british class than an average eccentric middle class man okay so he needs to have a physical uh, trait or some uh, you know the way he dresses the way he is clothed the, the kind of car he drives okay all that represents something a kind of a uh, you know you know fits into that category so that's what einstein did took actors who are not really trained actors therefore we use the term non professional actors but who had certain physical traits which represented certain ideologies or certain kind of people einstein heavily communist in his ideologies and he was often considered a propagandist okay in theater we have someone like bertolt brecht who was always considered a propagandist for a certain kind of ideology in cinema we had einstein who was clearly overtly anti nazi anti fascist and pro communism so that's what all his films reflect so um, this is how sergi einstein defined mon montage a montage is assembled from separate images that provide a partial representation and which are in combination and juxtaposition so this is the definition given by einstein so einstein necessarily in suggests conflict and collision in montage is that what you find in uh, citizen kane conflict and collision yes you do there is a conflict of interest between there is a marital discord okay so they may not be uh, overtly communist but still there is a conflict between charles kane and his wife okay so montage needs to suggest that that's according to einstein montage is particularly used again this i am quoting einstein when an editor or filmmaker wishes to convey a great deal into a brief segment so compression of something so you want to show 14 years how do you do that you cannot obviously portray 14 years in detail but what do you do you you, you resort to certain tactics certain techniques and montage is the best way to explore this to suggest how time uh, elapses okay einstein also believed that collision and conflict must be inherent inherent to all visual signs in films how many of you remember that famous scene from battleship potemkin odessa steps the odessa steps are you aware of this vijay are you familiar with a term called odessa a scene called odessa steps just take it down because we won't be able to actually do battleship potemkin but it's a scene called the odessa steps best exemplifies einstein's theory of montage so what happens there um in a very uh, brief in uh, in a nutshell i'll tell you what happens in that particular montage scene the uh, the, com the, uh, the there is a scene where um, a group of people have revolted against the tsar but it's a very peaceful kind of a rebellion or protest and then we are shown how mercilessly the tsar's army shoots them or guns them down okay so on one hand you are shown 
at those very highly placed, the very powerful army men descending down the stairs okay, of, of this uh, particular place, spot and the rebels are uh, symbolically uh, you know at a lower level and then how they are all defenseless, weaponless and helpless while they are being gunned down. Okay. So, there is a montage there and it is a lengthy sequence. Okay. That is because Einstein's ideology was such that he wanted to depict it very well, express it very clearly, very uh, explicitly the horrors of that particular regime. Therefore, we find the scene being done in great detail and montage works beautifully in that particular sequence to bring out the difference between two sections of society. So, conflict and collision. So, um, Einstein's works are influenced by his political ideologies we have already seen and his commitment towards Marxism. He identifies five types of montage, you need not go into uh, great depths of these, but at least know the terms, the terminology rhythmic, tonal, overtonal and intellectual. So, these are the types that he gives. If you are interested, you can look these terms up, but just understand that according to Einstein, there are five kinds of montage techniques. Okay, and this is what he comments while talking about the Odessa steps and massacre scene in Battleship Potemkin. Formulation and investigation of the phenomenon of cinema as forms of conflict yield the first possibility of devising a homogeneous system of visual dramaturgy for all general and particular cases of the film problem. That means, it is very important to formulate, we have been talking about these things since the beginning of the uh, these uh, classes, we talk about the grammar of cinema. So, he says it is very important to formulate a certain kind of a language of cinema to express certain ideologies. Okay? Okay, so, this is in short in or in brief are the principles of montage. There is a rapid alteration between shots that you have already understood when you were doing Citizen Kane, representing a kind of conflict. You have fast editing and unusual camera angles uh, which sort of a challenge the classic narrative cinema which is linear in tone and style. Okay. So, uh, Editing styles, we have been talking about montage, we will be also discussing jump cut as given to us by the French new wave filmmakers and all these editing techniques, why are they used? Primarily because the filmmakers invite the audience, the viewers to read their own meanings in the text, in the film. Classic montage sequences as used in cinema, we have been talking but Battleship Potemkin, Citizen Kane, again the dining table sequence, the Godfather, which scene? Again the massacre scene, while uh, uh, Michael Corleone is uh, getting his child baptized in a church, what is happening in, in the other end of, yeah, all his enemies, all his rivals are systematically being shot down, gunned down and it is a very brutal, very gory scene as juxtaposed with baptism. baptism. Okay. So, it brings out the irony very effective, very dramatically, the irony with between what this man pretends or claims to be and what he actually is. Rocky, the training montage, cinema paradiso. Exactly, you know at the end the hero of the film, the protagonist who is now a renowned filmmaker, he 
puts together a sequence of famous cinematic kisses. Why? Why, why is it so important for him to watch that sequence? Because there was a time when kissing on a screen was banned from exhibition at least in that part of Italy. Okay, so, it was thought it is not very appropriate for a family audience to watch. So, what the uh, projectionists would do? They would edit out those scenes and what this child would do who is so interested in film making, he would collect all those cut out reels and at the end he makes a montage of his own and kiss, watches a sequence, kisses, the immortal, the famous kisses from cinema. Okay, so, that is important, that is another interesting example of montage. Now, from montage we go on to, any questions or any observation on montage? Can you think of a very effective example? Training. training, even like in Rocky, it's it's a training, and uh, in Rocky <coughs> movies, it's uh, it was like a sort of transition from where they were to where the, they want to be. Yes, can you give me? Can you be more specific? I think it's used in all the Karate Kid movies. Karate Kid movies, fine. Okay. Makeover movie also. Yeah. Sometimes it's used in. Uh, uh, comic situations as well. Perhaps, you know, I, I can think of example, maybe uh, Devil Wears Prada, it uses as we see the passage of time, the girl doing the same monotonous uh, shows for her boss okay, and passage of time. We just see the same events being repeated, but there is a passage of time because we, she wears different clothes every time, she is fetching coffee putting out the newspaper, taking phone calls and there is a montage scene. Yeah. So, jump cut as an editing device now and jump cut involves a jolt in a film's progress. Again, this technique has been hijacked by uh, the music video people and suddenly there is a jolt for no reason or no purpose, but it is there. And it draws the viewer's attention to disturbing elision of time and space. So, what happens is uh, a film might cut abruptly from one location to the next without any attempt to employ those devices or matches of eye line that are essential for continuity. So, you need to know these concepts like eye line matching. And how this is disrupted or continuity is disrupted by the employment of an editing technique called the jump cut. So, it was the French pioneer Georges Méliès, okay, who first recognized that a jump cut could generate magical or comic effects, if the appearance of a subject film from a single vantage point was altered between shots. So, he is the man who is credited with introducing the concept of uh, jump cut. Remember, Georges Méliès was almost a contemporary of the pioneers in filmmaking. Who were the pioneers in filmmaking? The which brothers? Lumiere brothers. Are you familiar with the name? These are the pioneers of cinema. the Lumiers.
it is believed that the cinema of the Lumiere brothers, you remember the, which was the very first movie ever being shot, arrival of a train at the railway station. Hmm? It was a very linear kind of a narrative and very short and the se their second great film was workers leaving the factory at the end of a day. So, all very linear, uh, linear films um, and uh, editing wise nothing very uh, innovative about that. Of course, they were the very first films ever shot, but then Georges Lumiere start uh, sorry Melier started experimenting with the technique and he was the first to give um, or uh, show us devices like the jump cuts and all or employed jump cuts. So, usually jump cut as may as popularized is associated with Jean Godard, but he was not the first to use or think about the possibilities. It is just that he is the most popular person, most well known director to be associated with this technique. And one reason uh, Godard gives is that he was not being uh, extremely radical in as a filmmaker, but his film uh, Aboud the Souffle or Breathless otherwise known to in English to us is uh, uh, as a finished product, it was a very long movie. He wanted to edit out certain sequences and scenes. So, what he chose was to experiment and he started cutting film the, the movie within scenes instead of between scenes. So, therefore, you have a very jagged, very edgy kind of an editing style. And if you watch Breathless, you will understand what I am talking about. How many of you are familiar with Breathless? Okay, please watch Breathless 400 blows, I mean they are the basics of uh, film studies. So, jump cut went on to influence uh, all these actually montage and jump cut deep focus all these editing techniques they went on to influence a generation of filmmakers including uh, Bernardo Bertolucci. Does this name ring a bell? Okay, anything else more famous? No, no, no that is that's the Sita. Okay. Last Tango. Last Tango in Paris with Marlon Brando. The Last Emperor. Hmm? That's another Bertolucci movie. Scorsese often uses montage, zoom and jump cutting. So, any questions here before we proceed? Okay, Woody Allen, can you give me some example why he does that and when he does that? He confessed in Harry, you see, uh, as we go into the movie, hmm? uh, as the protagonist gets more psychotic, you can see jump cuts and montages. montages? Okay. So, again coming back to our same uh, idea that it reflects a passage of time, a growth in character. Yeah? What old boy this Korean film is all about? Uh, when man is kidnapped and he is locked in a room for 15 years yeah. and then all of a sudden he is just released and he wants to find out who locked him and why. Yeah. So, that is the plot, that is the basic plot of old boy. A man is one day just picked up from somewhere and he is locked in a small room and where he is just given the same kind of food every day, all he has is television for company, right. Okay, so, he is aware of what is happening outside this room just by watching, only by watching the television, otherwise he has no access to the real world or outside world. No one talks to him except there is a small opening in the, in the wall of his room from where food is given to him again. Because the kidnapper, whoever has imprisoned him, uh, that person wants him to be alive. And he's, he also ensures that this um, man, the protagonist, he sleeps 
and eats in time, he is also kept clean. Okay. As you, if you watch the movie, you will understand how, what are the things, but he spends 15 years of his life in that, uh, yeah, in that so called forced uh, uh, kind of exile or imprisonment call. Yeah. And then he decides to free himself, but he does not. Okay. Is the, uh, the person who has actually kidnapped him, he releases him, he controls the, actu the entire proceedings. So, um, it is also a deeply philosophical film. Also, as we have been talking about growth of a hero, you know, uh, the rites of passage, the Bildungs Roma, all those elements are implicit in old boy. Okay, therefore, the title itself is also quite symbolic, old boy. Hmm? So, uh, there, is, it's, there is a journey, there is a quest, where, what is the quest for? What is the quest for? Yeah, the Jason plot, but in the movie, what is the quest for? Why he's been revenge? He is after, he seeks revenge against this someone who he does not even know, why he was imprisoned in the first place. So, there is a quest for revenge and there is also quest for truth. Why was he imprisoned at all? So, there is a t point in the movie, where he comes face to face with the uh, with the person who kidnapped him, but he does not kill him, the, uh, uh, the so called villain, he says, he says, okay, fine, go ahead, you can kill me, if you want. He puts the gun on his head and he said, it does not matter to me, even if you kill me, but then all your 15 years gone down the drain, you will never know why I did what I did to you. So, it is not just revenge, it is also a quest for truth. So, there is a journey happening there. Okay. A very deep, very philosophical, um, one of the greatest movies of contemporary cinema. There is montage and a split screen. Okay. A split screen is very obvious and what role does montage play here? Passage of time. Passage of time. And what, what are the, how does the filmmaker denote this passage of time? Events, major events, world events, international events of significance. Some of the, you, you watch Princess Diana getting married, Prince, Prince Charles, okay, all these things happening within a certain period of time. Okay, the World Cup football, um, the Korean crisis, anything else? The, uh, the World Trade Center blown up. Okay. So, all these major events and he, this is how, the way he keeps track of time. Any other comments you would like to make about montage? Do you remember mon any montage, any significant uh, example from our scene, from our Indian examples? Songs in Tamil movies, like Tamil movies, cinema. Like, uh, before the starting of the song, the hero will be like very poor, by then he will be like very rich, so like in a montage. Okay. Uh, can you be more specific, which movie? Like I would like to watch this film. Tamil Tamil That is a spoof, because it is a spoof, they will resort to this, but otherwise in a, in a movie that takes <laughs> itself seriously. <laughs> okay. And what happens in Padayappa? Be more specific. Uh, Vitri could even the song. In one song, they show the entire uh, his development from a, his uh, journey yeah. from rags to riches. Yeah. 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 So, is, is there an ideology? Well, if there is, uh, it's not very explicitly <laughs> stated here. But montage did uh, start by way of an ideology. That's it. Today, it is used for a variety of purposes. Yeah. So, as we have seen in old boy, reveals a, ph a philosophy, reveals a passage of time, okay, but nothing more than that. All right. Now, please pay attention to the fact that uh, various editing devices, it could be continuity or linear editing, montage or even jump cut, what do they do? They generate layers of meanings decenter the concept of fixed meaning and leave it to the spectator to make up his or her mind.
all right then thank you very much and we continue tomorrow